my dear speaker. I am thankful to Kavin Brown that he has been able to come up some of the things I have said before and I don't have to go into all the details of what I told you last time. Some of you have come for the first time here. Yeah. So I will make a reference. As he said, Yantra in Sanskrit language means the mechanic. So the technique of the mechanic. Now what is this mechanism we are talking about? Is there any mechanism outside or inside us? Or is it work? in some subtle manner. All these questions can come to our mind if you are thinking and if you are asking. But I think that in the West, people go on very much developed They have sorted out many material questions and problems. They are very well equipped, but as far as the spiritual life is concerned, see, they are very now. Though they have such a great personality, like Christ to follow about the modern world, but maybe because of an organized religion, perhaps. It was not possible for people who were speaking truly to penetrate into it to make it work. So this tantra was a technique which works out of a self-realization is to be known, to be understood to be. And the yantra that was out, you have already got, I'm thankful to that this who has made a few mistakes of that yantra, which is beginning, is the instrument which is in it. But when we think of an instrument with our human mind, we cannot think of an instrument which is a living instrument. It is beyond our conception to understand a living instrument. This one is a living instrument within it. When we see a tree talking out of a small little working out blossom, one has to know that there must be some technique of some mechanism that works out this beautiful tree growth. And when we evolve from Amoeba to this day, we have to say there must be some mechanism which thinks, understands, organizes, loves, which has brought about this human age from that Amoeba. In the ancient India, long time, people have lo had lots of time. They went into themselves, into their being, to meditating, understanding. They had a glimpse of this mechanism. And they talked about it and wrote about it. And that's how this Yantra, the Gandhi, and the Tantra, the maneuvering of it, the technique of it, came into me. But it was a secret time. 
It was a very secret time and it was kept hidden from general public. It was used by very few great masters who lived in the jungle, had one or two disciples, worked on them for years together and taught them about the safety of the They had to leave everything, their family, everyone, live with the Guru, lead a complete celibate life and go into a complete transformation under the guidance of their loving This was in the ancient times. And what did they achieve and what did they have is all written in our scriptures. What do you expect out of self-realization? is written in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, and also in all the Indian philosophies. The only difference may be that in some of these scriptures, it is written in a very secret manner. Under some words that I will appear before you as tongues of faith. Now, who knows what is tongues of faith? There are so many sentences which you can find out now when you go and read, which nobody can explain unless and until they have had an experience of Kundalini. This is the yantra, the mechanism in the Kundalini is a living force within you, it exists, it is there, it is playing for your realization, for your jumping into another awareness which is promised to you through various scriptures, through various incarnations. It is within you, nobody told you lies, there is nothing but truth written in the But it was to be guarded, it was to be made into secret because people would have used for their purpose. And they have despised all of us. First, I would like to speak about self-realization because that is blissful. And then I'll tell you about the so-called task. I have to talk about it, though I have told about these things in the previous lecture because there are new things I have I have now shown here all these centers and all the mechanisms that is within us. They have also given you a picture of that. I have told you which are the deities sitting on all these different chakras as we call the centers which have incarnated on this earth, have built up our being one by one gradually in different evolutionary processes and how we have become human beings, this I have told you last time. This is the, this is the yantra and the mechanism that is this yantra, Kundalini, is a holy mechanism. And this mechanism is specially created within the being of the vast man or the vast being, the masculine. And we are the steps, all of us, in that. We were made aware as fishes of the soil. We became reptiles. We were made aware of the food available and the height. We raised our head, gradually we became human beings. 
After this stage, we started thinking of God. We started thinking on something beyond. Man is the only animal who thinks of God and of searching. Is the man aware that he has to become something? Why is he so confused? Why is he under so tension? What is he? He is searching something of which he has a glimpse. A glimpse of that joy he can be. And that joy comes from his self, Atma, in his heart. He has not felt it. He has not been able to manifest the power of his self. But there is a mechanism placed within it, properly built inside him. All the time present in all the human beings, just like this as it is placed in the vast being, in his image it is also placed within him. As I said last time, that you are all built to be just like computers. Now the job is to put you to the means. That's why you are seen. That's the only urge you have in life. All other urges are actually the side issues. You think you are searching in money, in position, in the myth. Those who have money are dissatisfied, those who have money, uh, uh, positions are dissatisfied, everybody is dissatisfied. Dissatisfaction can only come to you when you will reach the real thing which you are searching. And the real thing is your self and nothing. All other things are useless because you are not searching anything else. You are only searching yourself. And that self is the reflection of God Almighty. That is within your heart. Now the mechanism that is placed within you is this beautiful thing inside, which is placed inside you spinal cord and not outside, except for the last chakra which is in the red color, that is outside, in the prostate. And this is a very, very important chakra which controls the survival within us. I'm sorry, the pelvic plexus within us. It is very important because it is very sensitive. And also, it is very delicate because it is placed outside the spinal cord. This mechanism that is placed outside the spinal cord down below there is the most important chakra and was created first when the creation started. This was the first thing that was created. And what does it emit? Holiness. Innocence. It emits innocence. And the deity sitting on this is the embodiment of innocence. This deity was created in another dimension and he is, you have seen there, is Sri Ganesha. This is the image of Sri Ganesha that was created. At that stage, and what does it represent? Is the stage between the animal and the man. And the head is that of the animal showing that an animal does not have an ego. That the man 
is different from an animal, that the animal is innocent, he doesn't know what is sin, that's why he is innocent. Because you know what is sin, that's why you are innocent, but you can become defiled and contaminated. He is innocent personified, she said it again. And he incarnates too. On this earth, he incarnated as Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. He took his form as Lord Jesus Christ and because he is innocent, he is made of that essence of divine nature of God that we call as Paramatan, the highest essence of God. And that's why his body is also made out of that, and that's the reason he could resurrect. By reading Bible, which was written by the disciples of Christ, how far can you go to understand him? Because he was created beyond your thoughts. Beyond your mind, in an unlimited, unconscious. And how can you, with your limited mind, understand him or comprehend? It is said that even Brahma Vishnu Mahesh cannot reach him, he is so pure. He is pure. Is enough. And he exists at that point. And it is he at every point, every chakra, he bestows upon you the blessings of innocence. Innocence was the first thing created on this earth. Before creating anything else, it was innocence all everywhere. And he bestows that innocence by which you get yourself lavish. On the left hand side of this mechanism, there are seven stratas. On the right hand side, there are seven stratas. Down below, there are seven stratas. And on top, there are seven stratas. What are these stratas and what do they mean? The left hand side chakra, left hand side channel, which is called an ira channel, represents the subconscious, the subconscious mind within. You listen to me through your conscious mind and put it back into the subconscious mind. All your experiences go into the subconscious. That is the limit of your subconscious of present. Beyond that goes is your subconscious of previous lives and beyond that goes is the collective subconscious. When you listen to me, you have got a conscious mind which receives it at this moment and there is a free conscious mind which takes it to the subconscious this pre-conscious mind is on the right hand side. This also has got seven stratas on this side. Just now the pre-conscious mind is the future that you are thinking about. Beyond that is the supra-conscious mind, means all the ideas about future you have had before many lives Those ideas are there. And beyond that is the collective supraconscious mind. So, on the left hand side, you have subconscious and the collective subconscious. On the right hand side, supraconscious and the collective supraconscious mind. Down below are the seven stratas of health. H-E-L-F. 
Sometimes the words are so small that it doesn't register. If I say supra-conscious, then people say, ah, Mataji has said something. But hell, and hell is a truth. It exists within us. It is there. And there are seven strata of that also. Conscious mind also has got seven stratas, which are built in within us through our different evolutionary process. And these are the seven stratas which are placed here of the conscious mind. And then you go on top of the head into super conscious mind, which is the subtle mind is the eternal mind, the unconscious in which you have to move in seven strands. You say, Mother is too much. But it's not. You are already built in for that. For example, if I tell this light, you have to get enlightened and cover the whole hall, which will say, oh, it's too much. No, it is built like that. You have to just press the button, it opens and works. Because it is built that way, has been organized that way, is placed that way, that it works. When we say, think that it is difficult, we think we have to do it, and that's why we are worried. You don't have to do it. It's already done. And it will be done also by the one is organizing it. Only thing what you have to do is to witness. The one who has created this universe, were you there? The one who has created all the greenery, then human being, were you there? He is the one who is going to do this for you and the time has come, as Gavin has said it beautifully, that the blossom time has come and it will work out. But it's surprising, you know, human beings sometimes I cannot understand. When I told them that it is going to work out, they said, how can it be? It has to be difficult. Before even starting about it, must you sit down with this idea on your head, or oh, going to be very difficult? I say, it is the easiest and the simplest thing, being so important, it cannot be difficult. Anything important, like your breathing, if it becomes difficult, and if you have to read about breathing, how am I to breathe? Now you go in the books and see. Now you have to do like this. By the time you take the book, you are out. If you have to read about your self-realization, then God saves the self-realization and God saves it. Is your right that you are going to get your self-realization? I'm not pampering your ego. But that's how you are being made. Even your ego, which you are condemning every morning and evening, was an essential part of the thing. Only you, the human being, have evolved the ego to know something on them. So this mechanism was made specially in such a manner that through your ego and your super ego, you have become an I personality. Like you can say, this is Mr. Kumar. This is X, this is Y. You become a separate identity from that big vast personality of which you are the And the consciousness of that comes to you, that you are a separate identity and you have to see the oneness with that. And that is what is self Nothing else that you become that, not what you do, but is the becoming of it. Like you say, a seed becomes a flower. It becomes a flower, 
You don't, the seed doesn't go and read a book, oh, I, I know what it is. Or it doesn't listen to any lecture of Mataji or anything. It just becomes a flower. In the same way, you have to become that. And not to just to be brainwashed or to be done something else, which I will tell you later how horrible things you can do in the name of self realization. <laughs> so many of them are aware of it, so they know that. Now, what happens? We can, what is the mechanism, how it works out? Let us see the positive side of it, and then I will tell you the negative side. There is a Kundalini placed in that triangular bone there. You can see it. Pulsate, we have a doctor here, we will say that, yes, yes, yes. yes. You can see the pulsation of the Kundalini very clearly. You can see the rising of the Kundalini very clearly with your naked eyes. You can also feel it coming up. It comes. How it comes, how it works out is another detailed program which I may be able to tell you later on or I have already told quite a lot about it. This comes up, the Kundalini and pierces your fontanel bone, pierces. What is this Kundalini? It is a residual force within you. Is a awareness which understands things, loves and organizes is that energy. Now we cannot think, human beings cannot think of an energy that can think, love, organize. We can. This is the energy that comes up, you can see the pulsation. You can see the breathing of it with your naked eyes. That much you can believe. It comes up and pierces your fontanel bone and you can feel the bacteria that you become like a child because your fontanel bone becomes very soft. I mean, but that doesn't mean that if you have a soft bone here, that doesn't mean that you are a self-realized person. No. When you enter, not on left side or right hand side, but when you enter onto the top, onto the first strata of the super consciousness, then what happens? First thing that should happen to you is that you become one with the collective being. You become again I say, it is not lecturing, we are all brothers and sisters. There should be no racism. All this is lecturing. I am not saying lecturing, it becomes how? Ah. When this thing enters through this into that subtle form, you start feeling from your hands a cool breeze flowing. This is described in our scriptures. If you read, you will cry, I said, something passed out of my body when somebody touched me. But in our scriptures is given very, very clearly. In some of them, for example, I would say Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya has described them as Saundarya Lavari. He calls it as Saundarya Lavari force somewhere. He calls the vibrations. Everybody, people are talking of vibrations, but they don't know what they are talking. These vibrations that flow from your hand are cool vibrations. And also they understand and see and feel other people. When you put your hands to another person, you start suddenly getting a burning here. Left hand side, burning on this finger is the Vishuddhi chakra, is this one. Now, if you know the deity who is there, and if you take the name of that particular deity who is sitting here, if you know, and if you are a realized soul, then only. If you are not realized, you have no authority. You have no authority to take to any mantra unless and until you are a realized soul. Supposing I give you some mantra, you must know it is a misleading. 
because whatever is the, whatever is the center in danger or in trouble, you must get that one. The one who is not a realized soul cannot make out what is the problem, where is the problem. And the one who is not realized, if he is given the mantra, his mantra is, has no authority. Like if I want to go and see the queen, I must take her permission, I must have some connection with her, I should be able to go and meet her. But if I go and meet her place and say, oh queen, come along. The way we call God sometimes is most surprising. We wouldn't even call any servant like that. The way we call him, God, come along, do this. This is my problem. What are you doing for me? I have faith in God. As if we are of sort of we are meeting obligations. As if He is obliged to us. Oh, I have faith in God, Mother. Then why did He listen to me? You have faith. I mean, He exists eternal truth. If you have faith in that, you are really for fight, not He. You cannot add to His truth. Any mantra is given to you just by any dictum and hand. Anyone coming, I am giving mantra. I am going to tell you about them later on. All those mantras that are said are about the deity, were done by these gurus, as I told you in ancient times, for very few people. They used to raise the Kundalini very gradually. They used to take it from that seat, which is a Muladhara, not the Muladhara Chakra, from that triangular board, and they used to raise it one by one. For seven years it used to hang into one center. Then they would give one mantra, all right, now go on with it. Work it out. Then sit. Do it. Then again, another. Then again, another. All right. It has been done like that. Very slow process. As in India, you see, they said that when they had to go to Kashi or Banaras, they used to sell off their houses, everything. And they knew that they may never return. Or even if they go, they might take so many years to reach Banaras that by that time they will be absolutely old people and they would not have energy to come. Now if you have to go to Banaras, only thing what you can do is to go from here to Delhi and take a plane and go there. So that time is over. And Kundalini now can be worked out just like that because the time has come for you. There were never so many seekers in the world before, I can tell you. Only people who existed in the name of religion were orthodox, rabid, horrible people who crucified Christ, who <coughs> killed Muhammad Shah, who tortured Ganeshwara, who tortured Kabira, who tortured of all the things Shankara. Buddha, Mahavira, you read any one of them. All these horrid people in the name of religion tortured. And today we have got these satanic people coming out of that when they have suffered their See, they were punished and they were, they, after their punishment they are coming out with a double force, with a new subtler methods of befooling you In self-realization you get peace, complete tranquility, the collective consciousness and you can maneuver this power yourself. It is your power that is manifested and nobody else's. But as you have been to all these satanic people, who most of you have been last time I saw them. And when I told them, so they tried, because I'm working very hard, you know, working very hard. But some of them have really spoiled their path of Sushumna, the central path. So badly they have spoiled it that unless and until they give up all that, it's not going to work. If you are truly seeking, I'm there to work. You don't have to pay any money for it, no. Never think of that. Because 
This is divine, and divine cannot be sold in the market. First thing that should come into your head as Christians, especially, that Christ had taken a hunter in his hand and sat here beating those people that the only time he really lost his temper on them when they were selling the religion. And today all of them are selling it. And you very, very humbly go and bow. All kinds of these beggars and parasites have come in this country and all over the Western countries. They are nothing but beggars take it from. Worse than beggars, they are worse cultists. So this is what self-realization is. And in self-realization, you get all these blessings of God. Gradually you go into thoughtless awareness and then into doubtless awareness, which we call nirvikalpa, and then into self-realization. In that, we have some people in India, they have met them, who are completely self-realized and who sitting down there can work out the Buddha linear for them. They are living in the family. They have got their children, they have got their grandchildren, and they are working with them. You don't have to run away from them. No extremes are needed. Nothing. It is within you, and within you it is going to work out. The outside thing and the extreme thing are not needed. Just be normal people. God has created this world for you to enjoy. It is for your enjoyment. It is this blessing that you have to feel through self-realization. When the light of the self rules, you see the joy. So, you see it pouring from your head downward and you are just drenched. All your tensions go, all your problems go away. The ego and super ego, which is shown here as the black and the yellow, both of them open up and you see it going down. It happens. There is an imbalance. There is a, a some sort of a hurt in you. Sometimes I can say there could be a very grave wound into you. Could be there are some spies sitting in you. Could be that you are possessed without knowing that you are possessed. You don't know how these people have maneuvered and I hope I will be able to tell you now how they have maneuvered and what sort of horrid people they are. I think I should take off my shoes for that. So, about these horrid people now. <coughs> In India, since long, if you say the origin of so-called Tantrism, which is just a position of real Tantra, which is Sahaja, of the genuine style. If Tantrism is to be considered as a genuine stuff, then it is Sahaja. But the Tantrism, the so-called, came into being in our country since long. Ancient times, when these gurus were having those few disciples with them. Three, four disciples were taken with great difficulty. But they were, after all, human beings. There used to be competition with them. And guru would accept only one out of them, or two of them. Would take them a little ahead and would then give them up saying that, no. We cannot treat you anymore, you cannot be helped, you better go. Such a useless half baked person would come down to the public and would start a method by which he could put up a show against his school. This is the beginning, I would say. So he would now sit down and meditate. Still, you know. As a mother, I don't want to condemn all of them. I will give them a benefit of doubt. And the benefit of doubt, benefit of doubt is this, that when they were concentrating, they tried to lick into their 
Muladhara Chakra. Which you cannot enter, which is below the Kundalini. This Muladhara Chakra controls the Why? Because it is innocent. It's a child. And the child doesn't understand sex. That's why it is not contaminated with poison. It is like a lotus coming out of the mud of sex. In that lotus sits <coughs> Sri Gash. These people try to peep into that, thinking that Seth they might be able to see him. And they might have seen this is my own way of putting it. Not him completely, but his trunk as you see. And they might have confused, still I say, that trunk to be Nikundan. When I tried to understand human beings, I thought this may have been. Because how could man be just entering into hell directly with all understanding? It's too much to me. So by mistake maybe that they saw this. Alright? So first the Tantrikas came. Tantrikas were the first. Then we have Tantrikas, basically after him. Evil geniuses are in the fact. You see, you cannot divide them into all details, but you can give a basic, broad outline about them. The tantricas. tantricas are the people who use sex for so called self realization. Mantrikas are the people who use mantras for so called self realization. Then there are Jagadikas who use evil geniuses. To be introduced as evil spirits into human beings, called as Chandanikas, then Paishachikas are the people who used supraconscious devils into human beings, they are over dynamic, over ambitious sort of people. We have got Agoris who taught them to put, uh, say, they can put a uh, put a dagger into their hand. A whole. Then we have got Bigars. Bigars are the people who can uh, do horrible uh, horrible gestures. You see, they can pull their stomach in, to push it here, push it there, all sorts of things they do. And we have also sexo yoga. Minimum. I, I have categorized them as that. But uh, I don't know how many styles of things there are. Because when it comes to evil, they come and prosper like fleas. Viruses they have. And they know how to eat you. They themselves are destroyed and they cannot see you constructed. They cannot see you in war. That is one of the basic reasons where they are out as all these. So these Tantrikas were started their job. In the Rama's time, say about 12,000 years back, there was a yagya, a kind of a ceremony known as Ashwamedha. It's written in the books about that. Even that, the books, the scriptures they read by saying that Ashwamedha there was nothing else called but the sex act. The Shakti and Shiva, which is God who is innocent and his power is Shakti like light and the lamp or the sun or the sunlight. There also they introduced the symbol of sex. This happened in the 6th century. It was at its height in our country. A complete belt was taken. Say it starts from Konai. It goes to Kajura. So much so they were influenced people that all other scriptures were thrown into the rivers 
in the 6th century. Now what was the historical background for that? That was the best time, best breeding time of the horrible people. Because at that time as you had very extreme type of orthodox people. Jainese. Now we have a sect of people called as Jainese. Now they are horrible. I mean all of them are but one of them or thing I can tell you that they, they believe in vegetarian to such an extent means horrid thing to tell you because I have already told Ravi that for the first time I will be shameless to tell this people that they do not want to destroy even the insects that are in the feast to them and ensure that lots of Bugs can bite him and take out his blood and they pay him a lot of money. In the fact, even today they do some cancellation. They think it's a great punya, it's a great uh, what you say for punya? It's a good thing. See, religious thing is to make a man get inside a hut and bugs must come and the, take the blood. So these Jainis, so called big Asian called, they were the ministers in Norway. Some of them they became ministers. So, and the Marajas, you know the word Rajas of the king, were the Hindu. And Hindus as usual are very different to us. Whatever one may say about India, I agree it's a very great country and all that. But Hindus, he says they are even worse. Because now they all have become English, you see. With English education, all of them have become English, Western art. They don't think we have anything in our country. So, these, that time, the great Rajas, who are so indifferent to religion, to their sustaining power, to understand what is in their scriptures, licentious and permissive like your Roman king, horribly licentious. Wanted to put their money in some sort of an arrangement for all the licentious people around. So they thought of a way to change. Build the temple of God. And make all kinds of erotic pictures in the temple. Can you be that thing? In the name of art, if art is pure and simple, why do you need this vulgarity? Horrible erotic scenes were created through big competitions. Now you are having competitions in this country, but that time, of course, now you are also becoming tantrika, that's where our erotic things are coming. One better than the other. And they were given special prizes, even Jagis, as they call them, dance, were given to those people. It's written in the history. For creating those big despite that, see, despite all that provocation and despite all that temptation, you'll be amazed in Honara, see, that art is defied. They said, we are not going to do this simple thing. It's not, we are not going to do this. On a chapel, we are not. So these clever, intelligent people, you see, they told them that if you do this, it will be good because all the dirt that is here should be placed there. <coughs> and inside should be cleaned. Outside we must confess to God that we are like this. This is a confession. See the brain. This is a confession you must make what all dirty things you are doing, you put them out. <coughs> This was the this was the historical side behind. 
and that time these tantikas were actually too powerful they came. You have only one soho. We had sohos and sohos and sohos in that great country. You won't believe when you see those things, you know, foreigners are surprised that in India such erotic things are there. Wherever there is religion, wherever there is a saint, the satanic have to reach there, to destroy all that is evil. That is their style, they have been like that. This is the crucifixion of the few. And such temples were created, and those tantrikas then came forth. They brought about their all their wisdom. They call Konarak if you go, there is a Josan Bhavani Mandir, they call it a 64 goddess. Imagine goddess in temple. Now what do they do? Now what is the principle behind all that? You must know. It's a very secretive principle that they use. They establish a picture of a goddess or a statue of a goddess in a temple. And before the goddess they do their vichara, meaning sex life of different varieties, of different types, all things. In the beginning, Sri Ganesha gets angry. They get all kinds of blisters all around. They, they say that Kundalini is angry. Kundalini, why will she be angry? It is Sri Ganesha who is angry, but children tell her, throws them right and left, and they get all oh, blisters. They start dancing, jumping. They behave like frogs. They have horrid faces. They get blockers in the heads, they get headaches, everything else, but still they are adamant. Because it is said that you have to go further. It's a terrible task, it's a difficult task. These are your karmas that are coming to torture you. You have to take out your karma. Do your sex, you do better karma or bad karma. So they go on working. Then, by that, we know that what happens is they is too far. They go away from that. The area is vacated. The realm of God from there disappears. Disappears. As light, light disappears, the darkness. They work in the night. They never work in the daytime. In the night they work. And then they call the spirits. You can call the spirits. Last time I told you what happens to you when you die and how the spirits are there and what are the horrible spirits that are hanging around and you enter. So I will not go into details of that, but later on I will tell you all about it. I will tell you each and everything. You note it down. So they come, they call these spirits. When they call these spirits, these spirits are dusty and they be very dissatisfied. And they maneuver them. They can give them the name of say Rama, the Maya, Green, Green, all sorts of names they can give to these spirits. With evil genius managed them. And then they put these spirits or kings onto these big ministers. These people are captured and possessed. And they say, We are very energetic. We are running after, we used to run after only two women, now we are running after a hundred women. Mad. They lose all their sense of self. They have no understanding of what they are doing. Like mad. Even some saints can be affected, but they get reactions physically. Saints, if they indulge in this, immediately they get reactions. They get reactions in the head, in the body. And the reactions could be very strong on them. Sometimes they vomit blood. So these people start putting those horrible spirits on you, capturing you, taking out your money. In India, there was a Tantrika like that who amassed a lot of money, but his wife had been him throughout, and he built that horrible temple of that Kona. If he had not put any erotic there, it would have been a beautiful temple. But with that erotic, if he like vomiting all the time, then you see. I mean, if you are a sensitive person, you just can't bear to see those private parts. I mean, tomorrow they will ask us to watch these people sitting down there for uh, morning ablations. Filth and filth and filth. The whole place is nothing but filth. 
and then his own son defied him, this horrible Tantrika. This Tantrika was killed in a very funny manner. It was worth reading how he was killed. And the son came down and he completed that temple, but he told the king that your kingdom will disappear. All these, all these kings disappeared one for all. They had no children, they had nothing, and they became just shambles. And all of their temples were covered with stones, earth, and they were just bombs. Later on, the English came there, and some of them excavated and found out. They found it artistic. I don't know how they found it, but it was there. But in Kolara, you will find the whole thing is so good, so fun. Where the artist poor things had nothing to say. And I met the artist of that place who are living around. They said we are paying through our nose all these days for what our forefathers have done. And we don't want to see them. Even today in India, an unmarried man and an unmarried woman will never go to see a Konara. Now the only explanation they have is this. You'll be amazed that after marriage, Indian women are so innocent and they're married quite young, they don't understand what is said. So teach them how what is said is made for the marriage. And only the husband and wife should know that. This is the only explanation our Indian artists could find out to give for them. So we have to accept. You see, in every country there will be a satanic force now. Why should we identify ourselves with those horrible tantricas? And why should we be ashamed of them? In Khajura, the other tantric place, you will find there are some places where you find the not. But if you are alert and if you watch, these are placed in corners somewhere. While the gods and goddesses, goddesses are big forms, fat, very big, and they are shown separate. So it never comes to your notice, unless and until you are taken to it and shown now this is a Viratika. But surprisingly, most of the foreigners, especially Japanese, bring their camera from this angle. From this angle. Why don't they take their own photographs like that? What is there to go all the way to Konara to take those photographs? Show your search. Show us what you are asking for. The way from here people take all the way those big big cameras and go down and take photographs like serious size they look at. What is there to take photographs in that? What is there to give? Sex animals know, everybody knows, dog knows. What is there to teach about sex? You have done so much of mentally that now there will be importancy. And is there you know that? In America, the highest number of portraits are there. Because of this kind of perversion and ruining your innocence within yourself. Beware. The so called freedom is nothing but abandonment of your sustenance of your dharma that is within you. It's built in. It is there. It exists. You cannot cross it. Thou shalt not adultery. Christ has said not only adultery, but I will say thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. And you see people all the time doing. And they say we are in tension. What will happen? Where are you looking? Where are you seeing? Where is your attention? This human attention built up ages. So much has been worked. We have been brought from that level to this level today. Where are you wasting it? Into gutters, into filth, into dirt. Right. <coughs> and see your glory. Have that self respect. As a mother, I tell you about it. And these horrible tantricas and mantikas who are teaching you all kinds of things, like putting a mandala, the other day somebody told me, and putting your sex there. What is the mandala? Do you know it's the aura of God? You are showing your sex to God? 
Have some brains, at least it's nothing else. This is the greatest shameful thing. You are doing this to show you are sent parts to go on. Are you all mad? Can't you understand? It's a terrible thing. <coughs> I get upset with those because you don't know. You will lose all your chances of realization. Your seeking is going to be lost completely, believe me. Stab in your own. Why should you run after women? Why should you run after men? If you are a glorious person, stand in your image. That's the best way. You are going to be a human being. This kind of licentiousness and permissiveness is going to completely finish that chakra in the Navi. You see that one has got ten centers which are built so carefully, delicately, beautifully with love. Do not confuse love with licentious behavior. It is not. It's sanctified love. I don't say you become sannyasis, not at all. I'm against that also another instinct. That I'm going to tell you about sexo yogi people. The third time. The sexo yogi type are the people who are suppressing their sex. They use they use the skull of humanity. They need skull for them. To be in the subconscious, you have to have the skull. So they kill people, take out their skull and keep it with them. Some people are coming to open doors. So they, they keep those skulls with them and those skulls, they use it for drinking water, for eating food. All the time the skulls are there. Now, there is a very good story written by a great uh, writer in India, Pankim Chandra, is known as uh, Kapal Singh. This girl, there was a girl whom a Kapal is ahead. He used to make her nude, he used to make her dance, he used to make her go in the sea, and he used to control his sex eating before. And there are other ways also, even if the sexual act he would control. He went on like that and ultimately he was to kill that girl. That is the height of complete abstinence because you have killed the person whom you were supposed to have. Just imagine what what, what brain, what habits. I mean there's limit to this. God has not given you freedom to break your head and to say that, oh bull, come and hit me. And this girl was preserved. And then somehow or other she ran away and she, she got married to a man. He visited her, brought her back and killed her. These are the tapas. If you don't listen to them, they will take you to the smashana that is the burial grounds, cut your head, take out your skulls and keep them. They will see to it that you go to the subconscious state and they handle you better there. They would like to die through their efforts. They manage it. They do it. So many of them are doing like that. Even today you have no idea. And people are so much enamored, so much under the obsession of these things are, that if you, even if you tell them that your gurus are doing like this and they have found out, still they will be there still. Absolutely radically, they are possessed brainwashed completely. At least some people should be saved to save them. I always say that if a sari is flying out, even if you could hold a little bit of it, we can save the sari. The sanity must come to you to understand that these horrible methods are not going to give you self life You must know what self life is. Now some people think that Flying in the air, jumping somewhere, is something else. Which incarnation did, did you hear any incarnation who walked, uh, who, who sat like this 
and was floating in the air. Which incarnation did that? And what are you going to do with floating in the air? You are going to create a problem on the traffic. This nonsensical thing, why should it be? There is in Pona, they said there is one saint who died, you see, and there is a stone. If there are ten people take the name of the saint, it can come up. And you can put a finger, it can come. I said, is that what God should do? Think about it. And when I went there, I found out that there was a big spirit sitting there. And he said, I'm going to sit down here, mother, I'm not going to go out. And the spirit of that horrible fellow is all the time sitting there. He doesn't want him. He just wants to be full people and sit down there and listen everybody taking his name. Calling him a saint. When he is not a saint, why should he accept that he is a saint and be happy with it? Because human beings can do anything. They have given that power. And moreover, God is powerless before you because he cannot take away your freedom to be egoist or to be foolish or to be self-destroyed. He cannot do it. He can only weep and cry and beg of you, please don't do it, please don't do it. But he cannot stop it. That's the only problem. And that's why all of them have taken. They have all come from somewhere like five. At least I know sixteen of them and three horrible women. They are out there making money, making money. Be fooling you. Why do you need a guru for telling you a mantra? Any big Tom Harry can tell you. You must see the result. The proof, what's happening out there. You must think you are intelligent people. You understand everything. Why don't you understand this? Are you possessed? Are you under the complete obsession of such people? Or perhaps you have paid them so much money that you think, oh, how we have paid so much now, what? We should see through the whole thing. Like in the drama, you go and you don't like the drama, still we have paid the money in the it's not that casual thing. It's a very serious thing. You are going into the den of devils. Finishing your Kundalini completely, now there are at least 25 people among you who will say that. It has happened to them. I've been correcting them. I'm doing it. They get it back. I only feel sorry for one that you have been genuine about yourself. You have been genuinely thinking, and I can assure you that I went to America in 1970 to warn all these people, but that time they went, all of them had become <coughs> something special type of puzzle. They would not listen to me. I told Ravi Shakar, he said, Mother, you just don't go near them. They will eat you up. They are out to have experiences of Tom Fuller. Drugs. In India, how many people have seen the drugs after? Any one of them. Have, do they even know what is the difference between bhang and this and that? These drugs and all these things were used by Tantra. And they are out here. They have been seen. Thing that goes against your awareness, whether drugs, alcohol, any, is not going to give you that higher awareness about which I don't waste your life. It's very precious. The most precious and the greatest times have come. Please respect yourself. And please understand your own life. What you are learning for. Find it out. And do not waste it. You have already wasted a lot of your time. These, all these, I told you the seven status. On the left and right, I have names, which have to, just now I, I have no time to tell you, but there are names and names and names for everything. Hakini, Rakini, Rakini, Shakini, like that on the left hand side they have one. This side is Gayatri and Savitri and all that sort of thing. It goes on both the sides. All these are nothing but like reson resonance. They throw you from one to another. You are sort of tested in every step. And when they found you are a gorgeous, you go direct into hell. 
Не надо идти. So I have to make a very simple statement that keep yourself, respect yourself, try. If it works with you, well and good. I will have to work on the raising of the Kundalini, the bringing it out of it. You yourself will be able to do after some But cleansing is Kundalini and it should not be given because there is no way Nana, Guru Nana, we have it. At least three, four chapters away with Tantrika and Mantrika and with Paishatrika and with Chanda. In India it is an abuse to say, I mean I have first time used this word for on my tongue. It is an abuse to call somebody like that. If you say that to someone then the people tell them, they are kept outside like lepers. Kabira has written book after book these kheteris and this and that and he left them left and right. He was a great warrior. Everybody fought him, they tortured him. Christ was the same. He is the one who says not to go towards spirits at all. This is all spirits' jobs. But you go in London, every fifth house is a spiritualist sitting there. Free hypnotist. Why do you want to get hypnotized? Why do you want, want to get He is in what they call extrasensory perception. All these so-called geniuses also, these prodigies, are also possessed. I have seen many prodigies. One of them came to me, I told him about writing my presence, you calculate. She could not calculate even once because I put a bandhan to her. I said, get out of it. I have had many such experiences which I can tell you. Last time I told you how people who are possessed came to me and how they came. Now, there is still time and uh, we can go into self-realization experience. It, will, it might take some people only five minutes, but with some more. In any case, we must have patience with it. And don't be angry. Because when Gavin said ego, I will buy, I was afraid. Because if it is not ego, then the super ego comes. We are the worst people, we are the horrible people. We, from one extreme we have to stand in it. We are glory. We are not an aggressor, neither do you take any aggression from anyone. You stand in yourself, and through that, you end your own. You don't have to depend on anyone. No, it just works. But you have to depend on the deities that are within you, which have gone to see there has been a problem, they have to be corrected, and we have to know where are the deities, where are they. In the Sahaja Yoga, modern Sahaja Yoga and Nepali, there is no mantra given. No, because every second the Kundalini is going like that. Now there are people who say, Jesus can tell you, Jesus can tell you, it is here, that's not that you must have seen, she came to me, she said, Mother, I have caught man, or I get it. So, nobody is given a mantra, but you know where is the catch. You also say, she herself came and told me, I have caught, a, caught an agya. And you know, mostly extreme agya catching means what you know, paranormal. But she doesn't mind telling me, because she sees herself away from herself. So she told me, I have got an agya here. All of them say the Agya is there, I can see those coming inside me. He told me that I can see these entities now coming into me and I throw them on it and they have a nice, a nice program. If you have talked to them, they will tell you their experiences. Some of them went to the trance, I take them out. So many things happen now. People just like you came to me, I came. And you also came. But be sensible. Be wise. Be wise. You have to expect faith. And not Nothing is important. So may God bless you. We can go into a little meditation just by keeping your hands towards me.